wise men. Iconic sculptures and statues adorn major metropolitan cities of the world. In Lagos, Nigeria, the statue of three men designed to depict the state's cultural heritage and to usher in visitors and tourists into the ever-accommodating center of excellence is in no doubt an astounding work of art. Originally built under the administration of Colonel Raji Rasaki, designed by Bodun Shodende in 1991 and standing over 12 feet high, referred to as Agba Meta or Aro Meta, the three sculptured chiefs were placed along the Lagos Ibadan Toll Gate to welcome people coming into Lagos State. The statue called the Three Wise Men by many has become a major signature for the state. Three white cap chiefs clad in white wrappers knotted across their shoulders and with clenched right fists are shown in the artwork. The images fascinate and create impressions in the minds of visitors coming into the state, captivating the attention of visitors who look with keen interest, pondering on the messages which the posture of the engraved images signifies. The three wise men has been relocated thrice from its original position at Ojudu Berger and of Lagos Ibadan Expressway to Magodo area before its final relocation to its present site at Olo Boko Drive. The sculpture has suffered severe damages over the years and renovated. Bodun Shodende, through this sculpture, depicted the highest honor that can be afforded to anyone in the Eko greeting tradition. The three wise men, Arometa, Suk Enlightenment. Hello and welcome to Souk Pulse. It's the Friday edition. That's particular end of the week where we are meant to relax, take it easy and just kick out our legs. But on Souk Pulse, can we actually do that? Can we relax when the dollar is still above a thousand naira for those in Nigeria or when it's still trying to punch the cities silly for those in Ghana or when the Zimbabweans are just looking for gold to back up their, their currency. So how can we relax? Can we relax when things that we should stand up and own, we treat as if it belongs to somebody else that we don't even know and tomorrow we cry and shout that we need these same things. Here on Souk Pauls, we we'll have this straight tagline. I will tell you, don't keep quiet. Keep talking. When we see that things need to change, we talk. When we see that things have changed, we also talk. When we see that business are progressing, we shout it. When we see that business are not doing well, we call ourselves, pull our ears, and we talk. When we see that monies are being taken and they are being used for what they are meant for, we talk. When those loans are also taken and those loans are being misappropriated, we also talk. It's soup balls. And we say productivity is something Africa must embrace if we must survive. So we say welcome. Welcome to the Friday edition. Welcome to the end of the week edition of Souk Pauls. My name is Chooks, John Rogers Chooks. We'll go on a very short break and I'll get to introduce our guest for today and what we are talking about. I am so proud to have him here today. But hey, don't go anywhere. Souk Pauls will be right back. Broad Street. Broad Street, situated in Lagos Island, is steeped in Nigerian history. Once the biggest financial hub of the country, it housed the headquarters of major banks, linked to CBN, the stock exchange, and the loads of lender companies. 
Broad Street is a historically significant street. It has played a central role in the development of Lagos and history. An important commercial and administrative centre for the British colonial authorities. It was also a home to some of the city's earliest modern buildings. Broad Street was a residential area in the pre-colonial era. With the British came the Methodist Boys High School in 1878 and the Broad Street Prison in 1882, renamed Freedom Park. The General Hospital, which was a British military hospital, was built in 1893, being the first general hospital in Nigeria. The old British Secretariat Building, which is now the Federal Ministry of Justice, was built in 1906. Broad Street has seen a full turn into modern commercial office blocks, complexes, skyscrapers and markets from the outer marina through Akpombo early into the Adeniji Adele Road. Broad Street is one of the busiest streets in Nigeria on weekdays, where commercial activities take place day and night. From modern buildings to ancient structures, this street gives one a raw dose of life in Lagos. Broad Street is often referred to as Lagos Financial District. It boasts a mix of architectural styles, reflecting its long history, colonial era buildings, Victorian and Edwardian architectural features, alongside more modern skyscrapers and structures. Broad Street remains a vital, vibrant part of the Nigerian economy. Broad Street. Souk Enlightenment. Yes, welcome back. It's still Souk Pulse. And for those that are wondering, don't, you, you don't need to go there. It's Souk News. And on Souk News, we're all about positive programming. We are that place you go to when you have been loaded with too much negativities. We help you decongest. We help you breathe. <laughs> okay, now today, where are we heading to? We are asking you this direct question. Everyone says Africa needs to get productive. Everyone says we need to improve things. Government needs to make, create an enabling environment. That means different things to different people. Now let's talk about things that are on ground. Who has the responsibility? Who has the responsibility to maintain Africa's infrastructures? You heard me right. Like word for word. Me, you, government, I don't know who the fourth party is, but who has that responsibility to make sure this infrastructure, no matter which country you are from, those things that have been built, or those particular things that were there before you came, whose responsibility is to keep them running, to keep them operational, to make sure they are safe, to make sure they work, to make sure they are in a pristine condition. That's where we are heading to today. And to start this particular discussion, there is no other person to call on than someone that has the experience, someone that has been there, someone that saw a lot of this particular thing being built in West Africa. Maybe a lot of a lot of countries in Africa because he's also well traveled. Please join me as I welcome a veteran broadcaster, Bio Olawe. Sir, you're welcome. It's a pleasure to be here, Chooks. I'm Thanks. excited about this uh, issue of uh, infrastructure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Earlier on today, when you were bringing my my attention to this beyond the topic itself, um, I saw the passion in your eye, and I saw not just the passion. I saw the bitterness. Some some weird mixed. Mix it, what, what we're saying, and I was asking myself, you saw a lot of this being built. You saw the condition they were when they were built, and seeing them now. Now, we say we need government to build this, build that. We say we have this, we don't have that. Now, for everybody from your different countries, the one that is present now, what's the condition? How does it look like? Now, that's where we are going to first. We're going to look at the infrastructure. Let's start with Lagos. Yes. What are the things we have in Lagos? Yes. How were they when you knew them? In How all, are they now? Thank you, Chooks. In all my 74 years, I've been in Lagos. In all my, except maybe eight years when I went to Loyola College for my secondary school, and maybe three years when I went for the BBC training in London. I've been in Lagos all along. But so you didn't, add, you, you didn't add the, 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 
okay, if we submit, if, if we do a yes. submission of the days you've been traveling across, yes. you didn't add that part of I it. I didn't add that one. Okay. Because I traveled a lot when I was covering the state house with uh, Shewu Shagari. Mm -hmm. I don't want to include that. But I want to talk about infrastructure, especially on the Lagos Island. Okay. You know that when I was a teenager, the marina was a source of pleasure. You could go to the marina, take, uh, take a nap, take a walk, read uh, books, or discuss with uh, friends, or just have a nice time, take, enjoy the, uh, the breeze. Right now, the marina shoreline is in a sham. It's a disgrace. Right from Leventis there, right down to in front of our building here, in front of our office here, it, it's, uh, it's unbelievable the amount of erosion that has gone around the whole for sure. In the 70s, uh, at the second, where you have the second marina now, we used to have somewhere called Keyside. Uh, that is a, it's a place where you could go in and buy cheap things that have been exported. Uh, cheap things, sunglasses, t-shirts, shirts, trousers, uh, jewelry, clothes generally. But now, that's not happening. And uh, I remember that in those days, you could just walk across the marina down to the other side and uh, enjoy music with the likes of uh, Alex O, Uran Fadaka, uh, Jimi, the late Jimmy Sholanke, you know, he had Batakoto. There was a nightclub called Batakoto. How, how, <laughs> when you say I'm walking across the marina? That's walking from the Leventis okay. across to the other side. But okay. you have the second marina now, you okay. used to have Keyside. Where sheep coming from all over the world will come oh, and bats. And, and in the evenings, they will sell cheap things to young people. We were young, you know, wear sunglasses, shoes, socks, trousers, and what have you. So we're looking at the tourist potential, potential that was, was there before. It's no longer it's there. No longer there. Okay. Um, then I come down to the 25 stories, which I did a story about recently. You can see that the 25 stories is uh, more or less like a dam for hoodlums. The 25 stories Just across behind, the street, yeah. behind, behind yes. us. Okay, I think that was part of the, the square. The square. The square, the TPS itself, is in shambles. Apart from the uh, cricket over that has been uh, refurbished, if you get inside, you find that uh, not much has been done to the, to the TPS since it was uh, converted from race course. You know? And then you go down to uh, the Federal Secretariat in the Koi. That is a very, he's in a bad shape. We better not describe it. The, that's the Federal Secretary. Federal Secretary the completed building or the uncompleted? Because there are two, there are, there are two sets of, there is a completed one, there's an uncompleted Everything one. has been completed. Don't forget that I saw, I was at the opening ceremony of, the, of this edifice. Okay. And uh, when I was in Region Nigeria, I was almost coming there to see ministers and talk with them and interview them. But now it's in litigation. Okay between whatever and the Lagos State government. The Lagos government wants to buy, the federal government doesn't want to let go. So you have a crisis. And there are thousands and thousands of hoodlums living there with some kind of arrogance. Okay, and and this, these, are, these are all national assets. These are all national assets. These consisting are all assets. Over, over 500 or 600 offices. And these are assets that could really drive really tourism Even also. Even if you want to sell them, they could still, um, uh, the school, which we could still earn money from them, but to leave them as it is now is, uh, is unpardonable for government, for us, the people, and for the, 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 uh, the professionals too, architects, engineers, and what have you, that we have all kept our eyes shut while this building is degenerating and is turning to a den of robbers. Then I'll go to the P&T quarter, headquarters, just and around about there. My last estimate. When you say P&T, can you tell us what P&T means? and Telegraph, something. Okay. Just beside the band there. Now, now you're communicating. Yes. The headquarters on Moloney Street there. Okay. It has been abandoned for the past 11 years and has been overtaken by over 1,000 squatters. You can quote me, 1,000 squatters. And if you go there in the evening, you want to be funny, you want to be official, or you want to take pictures, or you want to ask people about what is happening, and you're that, on your own. And, and, and the, that particular building has a lot of history. A lot of history, yes. A lot of history. 
but no, nobody cares. There was a time the Lagos State Government set up a committee headed by uh, distinguished Alaji Femikunu to take, an, to take an audit of all Lagos State property in Lagos that have been abandoned. Nothing has not been done about that. Nothing has been done about that committee. That committee is moribund, and uh, we are all watching helplessly. Okay. Then you have the cabinet office. Where, where is that? The cabinet office is uh, opposite the TPS. It got what? burnt about 20 years ago, and it's still there. It is still there. The rot is all staring at, staring at us at in the face. It's still there. The cabinet office used to house? Uh, the prime minister okay. and his cabinet, cabinet in those days. Wow. When, uh, when the military left, there was a fire incident, and we thought it could be renovated, but up to now, 21 years ago, nothing has been done about it. Then I come to the pinnacle, what would I call the pinnacle, the national stadium at Suwile. Many promises have been made by government that they will refurbish it, they will give it to a private investor to, uh, to renovate and hand over to government. But as it is now, as far as I'm concerned, the national stadium is just a place for uh, hotels and restaurants. People just go there to go and drink beer in the evening. That okay. is a national stadium for you, Chooks. Where we're supposed to groom talents and showcase our sporting uh, potential. But it's a shame. It's a shame. Unfortunately, right across is uh, Teslim Balogun Stadium, which has been taken over by, federal, by the Lagos State Government and has been improved upon. You need to see the comparison. Then, if I come to my own uh, area of jurisdiction, broadcasting, if you go to the Voice of Nigeria now, I think that's why the federal government wants to uh, our next uh, Voice of Nigeria with Radio Nigeria. The, there are about 11 studios there built by the French government but that have been abandoned. And at the time, Voice of Nigeria was off the air for almost six months. That is an abandonment. Okay. Now, let's, let's, let's take this discussion another way. For some of you that are wondering why are we bringing this up, now, we say we have to get productive. If you look at where he was coming from, he mentioned a whole lot of buildings that have a lot of historic significance. These are things that we should not just study in school, but places we want to visit. Tourism. You mentioned about the marina. Mm. These are not places that should be developed, but even if how it was before was maintained, with or without the new development, and it's working, people get there. Tourism. We are looking for how to get people to work. We are looking for how industries can grow. We are looking for how people can put food on the table. So for every single brick that needs to be maintained, I'm not even talking about the building, for every single brick that needs to be maintained, every single floor that needs to be painted, Every single flower that needs to be watered, we should take responsibility. Yes. We have to thank the uh, Minister of Works for what he's doing on the Co Bridge. Okay. On the Third Mainland Bridge and okay. all our bridges. Because at a time, all the railings have been taken away, stolen. Okay. Now we are looking at vandalization. That's vandalization. Okay. Vandalization Who's... because of abandonment. If there had been security on those bridges, people wouldn't have the nerve to go and remove uh, railings. Now, Umar, he says he wants to put uh, street lights, he wants to put uh, cameras and all that. On the Third Milan Bridge? Third Milan. Okay, the last, an, the last time I went to Third Milan Bridge, they were fixing street lights yes, on both that, sides. That is, that of, is an improvement. Of, of, of the, the, the Third bridge. Milan Bridge is an asset. The stars will be protected and guarded. Unfortunately, we see the number of accidents we've had mm. in the last five days. Okay. So all of now, us are for, guilty. For, the government is guilty, <laughs> we are guilty. And the professionals, engineers, architects, um, town planners are turning the other eye while the whole thing is, is, is rotting away. So for the responsibility, we are all guilty? All of us. All of us. All of us. Okay, now, let's look at the Todd Millan Bridge. The Todd Millan Bridge needed repairs. Yes. We were shouting. Everybody was shouting. Yeah. Now the federal government has come and effected some all the good repairs. level of repairs. All the repairs. Now people are dying on the Todd Millan Bridge. Because of what excuse do we because have? Because of indulgence and indiscipline. How could you? There is a speed limit there. 
Okay. And in the negotiations in their usual disseminator, dis dis won't, won't listen, won't adhere to that. Because they've seen good. Because they've seen a good road, which they, they, which they have been clamoring for. And now you're, you're just running without uh, concern for other road users. So, so I think the, the government has done its best on top of it. All, all we have to do is to face for uh, enforcement of the laws. The Federal Road Safety Corps, the traffic wardens, and the Nigerian police to collaborate that at least let people be seen when they are driving. Let them keep to the rules. Okay, now the case of vandalism. Mm. Where and how can we start in tackling vandalism of government property, of our national treasures, because that is what these are? These infrastructures, how can we start saying if you vandalize or if you take away what is not? What you are not supposed to take away, or in any form, spoil, or use any form of gravity on it. What? How can we start in making sure that doesn't happen? We have to we start thinking of punishment. I'll talk about law enforcement. We have okay. to enforce the law, and we have to keep an eye on these assets. Security has, has to be provided. I was coming to the city hall before you stopped me, and that is another uh, another anomaly. The city hall symbolizing the image of Lagos State. Yes, it was, uh, it was uh, uh, destroyed by um, hoodlums during the answers, but government has not responded enough to repair that thing and get it working. So many offices are there that, are, that have uh, relocated, and I think uh, it's, it's not proper for us uh, Chooks, we cannot talk about uh, infrastructural abandonment without talking about our bus stops in Lagos. All the bus stops in Lagos have been turned to either sellers of Indom Indomie noodles, <laughs> of practically taken over by hoodlums. As a result, how many, how many bus stops do we have on Lagos Island? The Koropes, don't, don't, they don't appreciate any bus stop. They, don't, they park anywhere and they, take, they, they pick passengers anywhere. Uh, law enforcement, that's, law that's enforcement. the duty of the law enforcement. Yes. Now, we need the beauty of Lagos for people to be to, restored. Yes. And we also need uh, all these landmarks. Mm. We need people to know them. So you, you just leave your house and say, I want to go to Maloney. I want to go and see the PNT building. You leave your house, okay, I want to go and see the old cabinet building. And when you get there, if you want to go inside, even if it's just a token, if it's a token we get to pay, if it's whatever, we know that we are generating funds not just for Lagos State, it could be for other individuals that can run businesses yeah, around yes. the place, it could also be for the federal government. Do you know, Chooks, that there's a, there's a love garden on Lagos Island? <laughs> love garden. Really, love garden, just behind the J.K. Randall Hall there in those days. A love, love garden. Love garden, yes. Just and by, people fly, just to, by the swimming fly to Italy to go and drop There's a love garden with flowers. Coins and keys into a love with, fountain with, there. With flowers and, and people go there, really, lovers go there and enjoy themselves. Those things are not there anymore. Uh, recreation centers are not there anymore. So we are, we are more or less building hoodlums who cannot recreate, who cannot read. How many libraries do we have? How about they have turned the only library we have in Nigeria, in Lagos Island? Central Library. He has turned it to whatever. Well, Central Library. <laughs> La Lagos Central Library, where all of us, including the governor, went to to read and uh, get acquire knowledge. It has been abandoned, it has been turned into whatever, blood transfusion center or something. Just like your school of nursing here was abandoned, now demolished and taken to a bed. Those are the beauty things in Lagos. What are you talking about? Okay. We, we are, according to Baba, from his point, we are all responsible. All of us. All of us. Now, we will go into the second part, the part B of this particular program, Supports Today, and um, another guest will be joining us. I want to say, Baba, thank you very much. Now, for those of you that are wondering why I will bring in this, if that particular property that you're seeing by your side, that particular infrastructure, that particular thing, you think is not yours, Yes, it is. You think it doesn't belong to you. Yes, it does. You think it's not going to cost you. Mm. Yes. 
It's taxpayers' it money. It's government property. Leave it. Exactly. Government's property. Government is our property. Yes. Then tomorrow, when fuel goes higher, we all cry. But government needs money to fix those things. So why not make sure that it doesn't spoil so it doesn't get fixed? So you keep having your money. We keep making more money. All across African countries, this is our sense and what we say in Bible. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. I'm most, most grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful to you. Okay. Soup Pulse will be right back. We're going on a break. Don't go anywhere. Latif Jakonde. Born Latif Kayode Jakonde in the Ekbetedu area of Lagos Island, Lagos State, on July 1929. He studied at the Lagos Public School at Enwawa, Lagos Island, then at Bonham Memorial Methodist School, Port Harcourt, King's College, enrolled at Elisha Grammar School, where he edited a literary paper called The Quarterly Mirror. Jack Onde began a career in journalism in 1949 with the Daily Service and joined the Nigerian Tribune in 1953. The owner, Chief Obafemi Awolowo, appointed Jack Onde editor-in-chief of the Tribune in 1956. Jack Onde established John West Publications in 1975 after leaving Tribune and began to publish the Lagos News. He served as the first president of the Newspaper Proprietors Association of Nigeria, NPAN. Jack Onde ran for election as executive governor of Lagos State in 1979 on the Unity Party of Nigeria platform. His administration was effective and open and implemented the cardinal policies of his party. He introduced housing and educational programs targeting the poor, building new neighborhood primary and secondary schools, and providing free primary and secondary education. He gave poor people's children education, and many of them are now very prominent in the society today. Jack Onde established the Lagos State University and constructed over 30,000 housing units. After the military takeover in 1983, Jack Onde was charged, prosecuted, and convicted of treason and later pardoned. He served as Minister of Works under the Sani Abacha military regime. He died in Lagos on February 11, 2021. Latif Jack Onde was the first civilian governor of Lagos State. Latif Kayode Jack on Day, Souk Enlightenment. Hello and welcome back to Souk Pauls. For those just joining us, we are looking at infrastructures in Africa and we are asking ourselves this direct question. Who has the responsibility in maintaining them, in looking after them? Whose responsibility is it? Is it mine, yours, government, or the fourth person? I don't know who the fourth person is. So joining us on this part B of this particular discussion. Earlier on, we took specific examples. We went to Nigeria, Lagos to be precise, and um, Bayo Olawe, Mr. Bayo Olawe, called out several infrastructures, some with a lot of historic significance. And now we are going and now looking at a different side of it. To do justice to that, please join me as I welcome Mr. Sam. Sam, you're welcome. My pleasure. Thank you very much, sir. So Good he, 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 is no, he is no guest here. He is my in-house analyst. He is um, not just that. He's also a teacher on this side of the divide. So we have him right here in Nigeria for now before he decides to disappear. So, sir, you're welcome. So now, sir, we are going to look at some specific issues. When it comes to infrastructure, we say we want more. There has been this particular study by Augusto and Co. And right now, they are saying that Africa, Nigeria to be precise, needs $150 billion yearly to bridge the infrastructure gap. So if we are trying to say, OK, we want to be able to, let's forget about the word, compete 
We want to be able to take care of our people, over 200,000 people, make them productive, 200 million people, make them productive, get them the kind of life that is better than what they have right now. I'm not using anybody's statistics. I'm just quoting directly from what we want. We need close to that amount. Now, what about what we already have? We can't be looking for something, whereas what we have, we are throwing it away or wasting it. So now let's deal with specific issues that are causing this form of attitude, be it from the government side, be it from the people side. Sir, will you say illiteracy is playing a role at the way we see infrastructure in Africa? No, I don't think, uh, uh, permit me uh, to begin this way, I don't think it's illiteracy. Uh, the problem is that um, there's been, always been a gap uh, between the bureaucracy, that's the government uh, structure, and the citizens. And the only way uh, we can forge a meaningful and sustainable partnership is to see how we can bridge uh, the gap in terms of um, sustaining the media advocacy and citizens' uh, education in terms of how they view government uh, infrastructure. Uh, is it government infrastructure? Yes, it is, because the government has the responsibility uh, in terms of its ability uh, to manage uh, those infrastructure. Therefore, uh, the Todd Milan Bridge, does it belong to federal government? It belongs to the federal government. Uh, Who is the federal government? The federal government is the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Which means I have no share in it. No, you do. I, I'm trying to put it in perspective. So you have the government on the one hand, then you have citizens on the other hand. And uh, in modern um, civic obligation, uh, there's been a call for what you call civic participation in governance or in government. And then what you call an open government ecosystem uh, that's been being practiced by some state government, particularly uh, the Kaduna State government, uh, where citizens are empowered uh, through various means or not they, they can hold government to account uh, in terms of transparency. That open government ecosystem helps citizens to be able to monitor government infrastructure uh, in terms of budgetary provision, in terms of um, uh, how far these projects are, have come and to what extent uh, does the budget reflect uh, the actual um, infrastructure that government has been put, uh, has been able to put in place. So the point I'm making is the government uh, is a facilitator on the one hand and is equally a regulator of some of those infrastructure. But in terms of ownership, uh, the citizens, uh, because their taxpayers, own those um, items. But the citizens, do not have power within a constitutional framework uh, to manage those for infrastructure because we are surrounded our rights under democracy uh, to the institutions of state and those who lead those state institutions. Okay, now how can we make it possible? How can we make the people, if I say citizens, people will start looking for who is the citizen. How can we make the people of a given African nation, the people of Lagos, Nigeria, whatever state you belong to, how can we make them or get them informed or get them to the point where they know and take ownership of these infrastructures? Because if I own something, I won't watch you come break my laptop. In an elementary uh, civic studies or civic ed education, it's what you call duties and responsibility of uh, citizens and the duty and responsibility of government. Uh, and we are told uh, by the Constitution uh, that the government is there to provide security and welfare for the citizens. On the other hand, the citizens have the obligation in terms of paying taxes and uh, taking care of their institutions uh, by way of uh, holding government to account in terms of uh, uh, transparency, accountability of uh, 
the power that we have surrendered to the uh, people that hold those institutions. So the point here is that um, there's a correlation uh, between what the citizens should be doing and what those uh, uh, representing government uh, should do. But then to strike a balance, uh, particularly in terms of uh, uh, state infrastructure, citizens uh, must take ownership of those government infrastructure. And uh, they are able to hold government to account uh, from time to time. When we are able to strike a balance or a relationship in terms of duties and responsibility, then I think the citizens uh, will become responsible citizens. And those who uh, are responsible uh, to managing those institutions uh, will equally be accountable and transparent. How can we strike that balance? Uh, the balance can be, strike, uh, can be struck sorry, uh, by the way uh, we provide adequate education. So those in government, particularly uh, uh, those government agencies, like the National Orientation Agency, must find a way uh, to increase uh, their public education infrastructure so that citizens are informed in terms of ownership of uh, government infrastructure, in terms of accountability, in terms of calling out those in government to be more accountable in what they do. Then citizens, on the other hand, must equally behave responsibly uh, in terms of the maintenance of this uh, uh, public infrastructure, rather than saying uh, a government property belongs to nobody. Government property belongs to nobody, which is 100% wrong from what you've posted. Absolutely. 100% wrong. It yes. belongs to every one of us. Now, you've, you've also touched a bit on criminality. Can you go towards value system? Because we've seen this over a period of time. Typical example, Todd Miller Bridge is being fixed, and people are already skeptical if the lights being installed there will be there in two weeks, or the railings that are there is going to be there in two weeks. Same thing happened to the Eco Bridge. Some of them are gone. The Onicha Bridge that was built not long ago, that's, that's the same complaint. Some of them are gone. Is it a value system, or is it that we have refused to hold ourselves responsible? We see, we turn our eye to the other side. I think, Chooks, um, uh, permit me to say that uh, values uh, and the failure of uh, state institutions uh, to be accountable uh, to the people. Value, yes. Why will we be stealing uh, the infrastructure that belongs to everyone? Then when these things are stolen, they get into the market, and somebody buys those things, and some of those items are, 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 are resold to some other person. So there's a problem somewhere in terms of of the institutions uh, responsible for law enforcement, particularly the police uh, that is uh, saddled with the responsibility of uh, maintaining law and order in society. On the other hand, the value systems, um, uh, how do I describe it? Has gone down the drain to the extent that uh, People do things with impunity to the extent that uh, people have some temerity to go and take um, the railings, uh, the street lights, they are stolen, and again they get back to contractors who will fix them elsewhere and they will be stolen. So there's failure of uh, values from family values to institutional values to state values. On the other hand, failures of institutions uh, to hold people to account in terms of um, providing law and order uh, uh, within the security sector, uh, there's equally a failure because some of these things, where they are stolen, they find uh, their ways into the market and some people purchase those things. So what the government can do is to massively brand those items in a way that when they get into the public space, people can easily identify them as government property. So there will be a deterrent uh, for those who want to profit from illicit affairs. 
so that again uh, we have to preserve those institutions. Two, uh, we must find a way to deploy technology in terms of uh, the maintenance of public infrastructure. For example, uh, the Tommy Lambry that you just mentioned uh, has just been reworked uh, with new uh, railing system, new lighting system. The road is wearing a new look. So I see that cameras uh, should be fixed on that road uh, that can capture the operations uh, of people, even the vehicular movement, and people road. who use those roads. So if there are infractions uh, in terms of um, criminality, trying to take those railings, the lighting system, whatever government property that is on that road, the camera is able to take, um, um, take the capture of some people. And when this is reported to the police by the Federal Ministry of Work, what they need to do is to deploy the policing mechanism, and they are able to bring uh, those who have made infraction into the law by prosecuting them. And that will serve as deterrent to other uh, criminal gangs that have intention uh, to behave in the same manner. Okay. Of, uh, okay. Let's let's change this. Let's change this discussion a bit. While when I was in school, I was quite younger. I had this very friendly lecturer, and one of his class one day he said. You, when you get angry with your mom or you quarrel with your mom, you don't go breaking the pot. Because at the end of the day, what will you use in cooking for everybody to eat? Where am I going to? We have issues when we have is political issues, let's say political instability, a party, this party, just agreeing, whatever be their issue. And that anger is taken out on government property, taken out on government infrastructure, properties and infrastructure that belong to the people. How can that be stopped? No, I think uh, if you look at uh, uh, that issues from social movement uh, point of view, uh, where you have uh, protests, uh, uh, students of psychology says uh, that once there's a protest, uh, people's identity uh, taken away from them, and people do all kinds of uh, uh, stuff that are not palatable to society. I'm not justifying that uh, people should destroy uh, government property, but once protest uh, takes place, then the, there's always a reaction uh, to attack the state uh, institutions by seeing how they destroy property. But the that is not state, state institutions. Can you attack the people? No, the point I'm making is that I'm not supporting it. I'm no, giving I'm a just, background. I'm, that's, just, I'm just adding to it. Yes, if that's, you feel aggrieved that a particular set of people are not doing right. Those particular set of people have their private properties. Go there. No, we can't Do, encourage. We can't. No, if, we cannot encourage they, that. Why, no, should, we they, why they, should they burn? No, 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 no. Burn no, we cannot state encourage. Property. No, our we cannot, property. No, we cannot in encourage. Anger of what? No, we cannot encourage. I was just trying to situate uh, the negative impact okay. of protest. And within social movement, once there's a protest, the reaction of people is that the state are trying to stop them. So they react negatively to, uh, to properties of everybody. Yeah, so the state properties in particular. Property that belongs to yeah, everybody. Yeah, the state. No, state in particular. Then where uh, there's a, 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 a crossfire purpose, some private institutions may be attacked by form of criminality. Okay. The point, now, if, if we the say point, state property, no, 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 the point can is, we identify what is state property? No, state properties. Are properties that are developed by government. That belongs to all of us. Yeah, it belongs to all of us. But then, this uh, reaction uh, for protesters, in most cases, when they want to do civil disobedience, and the police... There, are, have, other, no, there are other ways of, of, no, no, of no, no, doing no. the civil disobedience. Leave the public property alone. Yeah, the point is that you have all kinds of miscreants that are recruited into the social movement, and they take advantage of that movement uh, to see how they can direct uh, the, uh, their grievances, as it were, to the state. Therefore, they destroy state property. Okay. But that property belongs to everybody. So the point we should be making is that there should be more public advocacy that when there's a protest, 
even when you have issue with the police that has overbearing influence in terms of how they deploy even say resources against say, citizens, then we should not, as a people, find a way uh, to destroy government property and by extension, property. individual property. I would really love you to use public property. That's exactly what I've, I've, I've said. Yes, whatever property belongs to your country, belongs to everyone, so no one has the right to destroy it because you will still pay for it. Yeah. Now, let's, 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 let's go somewhere before we really round up. Now, we're looking at infrastructure. Now, let's also talk a bit, although we don't have much time, infrastructure uh, decay. We see a lot of, um, a, a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of construction. Either they are not done right, or they are not done to the standard that was put on paper, or they've been done and abandoned. This is majorly coming from the side of government from different countries. Can you address this issue and tell the people what sort of advocacy can also be used to make this things come to the attention, to the forefront of whichever government is in charge? Number one, uh, even before we talk about advocacy, is that uh, public institutions uh, that are accountable to the citizens must find a way uh, to remove this corruption mindset where uh, personal gains supersede uh, the common gain. What do I mean by this? Uh, because of personal interest, uh, some items in terms of design, in terms of standards, are lowered or compromised because people have certain interests. Therefore, state uh, institutions uh, must find a way uh, to do their job uh, to sustain the common good of society. So, if there are standardization in terms of uh, engineering practices, in terms of uh, construction, in terms of uh, the columns that should be used for those construction sites, they must meet international standards and people must not compromise. So if a road uh, is built to last for 30 years, they must last for 30 years. And this brings to mind uh, what a friend of a relation in, um, um, in um, where is this now? In Rwanda, uh, was telling me that um, the engineer who satisfied uh, a road infrastructure, who finally, civil engineer, who finally said this road has met all the specification based on what was uh, put in the bill of quantity is more guilty than the contractor who does the road because you as a certifying engineer has to see how uh, the project meets up with the specifications. And if that happened, and you have put uh, holes on the road where the road is due to last for specific years, then you'll be arranged uh, before the cost system and you might be jailed for that. So number one, Says institution must be responsible. They must insist on standard. And that brings me uh, to one other aspect uh, which you may have discussed with Bayo earlier. When you look at the road that's just been reconfigured, uh, the Tom Mayland Bridge, uh, the number of accidents within the few days of the reopening of the road uh, leave much to be desired. People don't respect uh, uh, road signs. People are not properly tested uh, before they are given license uh, to use the road. So specification standardization, regulators must be up and doing in terms of maintaining standard. Two, uh, we must practice what I call citizen diplomacy. And citizen diplomacy is essentially about citizens uh, holding government and public institutions to account in terms of uh, putting pressure to bear. So if a road is being executed in your area, uh, you have a right under the Freedom of Information uh, Act uh, to request for the information in terms, what are the constituent elements in terms of budgetary provision, what uh, inputs are supposed to be put into that road network. And when they don't meet up with the standard, you have the right 
uh, to complain uh, to the appropriate quarter. And where they don't even do that, you will have right a civil society or a stakeholder uh, to approach the court uh, to demand a redress based on your lack of satisfaction of uh, the public infrastructure that comes to your community. Okay, now, um, this particular one is more like a topic for one good week. We, we see a lot of abandoned projects across Africa, across length and breadth of Africa. Different things could be the cause. Corruption, like you said, change of government, continuity, um, contract given to the wrong, there's a whole lot. How can we start stopping this issue of contract or project or infrastructure that was started and not finished? I think the government is a continuum. Um, government go, go, government come. And they would put it on the street language. So they are goes, so they are come. So the point here is that um, uh, for every project or public policy uh, instrument that has been enunciated, whether in terms of infrastructure, uh, people in government must find a way to pull those projects through whether they were uh, done by an opposition party at a particular point in time. Once the projects are useful and once they are evaluated and they can contribute to the public good, then people must find a way to pull those projects through. On the other hand, uh, when you talk about personal and political expediency in terms of uh, uh, project enunciation, where uh, parties or government officials bring about big projects that are not sustainable, then those projects should not even come in terms of uh, when they are looking at the evaluations and they are not able to pull through. So that we don't waste so much uh, uh, government money. There are a lot of uh, projects within the public space that have been abandoned. And if you look at it from a, a sunk and administrative cost perspective, some of those, even if you re validate them in terms of inflation and the cost of uh, building materials, some of those projects are no longer sustainable. But public money has been wasted. So government must be responsible to look at projects uh, that are short term, medium term, even if they are long term. They must put a kind of policy instrument or framework in place that these projects must be completed by uh, succeeding administration so that we don't uh, dot the public space with a lot of uh, abandoned projects. So government should be responsible in terms of uh, the pricing regime, in terms of the projects that are more appropriate, and they should not cite a white elephant project in places where even the communities don't even need some of those projects that uh, just come as grand those projects enunciated uh, uh, by the, either the governor or the president based on his personal idiosyncrasies that are not aligned with the communities that need uh, some of those projects. Okay, I want to say thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Sam. It's My always pleasure. a delight having you on Souk Pauls. My pleasure, Chicks. Thank you, sir. So, yes, you, you, you've heard every single thing. I always smile and I look at myself and I say, thank God. Africa, we need to wake up. And of the truth, we are waking up. We are trying to our best to make sure that we join this race and get productive. So whatever we have to save cost from, infrastructure being a very, very integral part, we must not waste money that we don't have. So we should not start projects that we won't finish. And for those that we have, we must make sure we take care of them. So we can now have enough to build new ones. To everyone out there, government should be responsible. I should be responsible. You should be responsible because every of those projects, every of those infrastructure belongs to me and you. We'll do this again on Monday. Remember, be good, have a beautiful weekend, and never keep quiet. Have yourself a nice day. My name is Chooks, John Rogers Chooks. Bye.